Good morning. Good to have everyone here this morning for this historical moment in the history of Union Bible College. We talked a lot last night about the past history. We're getting ready to make history this morning with the unveiling of this monument. We're, and again, I appreciate each of you coming out for this event. And uh, God has been good to all of us, and we certainly appreciate your presence here this morning. We're going to have an opening prayer. And I'd like to have Brother England. I don't know where he's at in the congregation, but uh, would you mind coming up here, please, and open this service with prayer? Brother England is one of our former presidents. We're so thrilled to have three of our former presidents here with us this weekend sharing in this celebration. Let's all pray as Brother England would come. Unto thee, O Lord, do we lift up our souls this morning. We come with gratitude and thanksgiving unto thee for all that you have done over these past 150 years. We give you praise and honor and glory today. We worship thee. We thank you, Father, for this historic occasion. We ask your special blessing upon it, upon President Whitaker and all the staff, alumni members, and all the friends of Union Bible College and Academy. We thank you for holding back the rain today, and we thank you for your presence. We pray that you especially pour your spirit out throughout this day and the remaining part of this service. We pray in Christ's name, amen. Our music director, Jerry Glick, is going to come. And he's going to lead us in a song this morning. <laughs> All right, we've tried to pass out uh, many sheets as we could there, if we could find you and get them to you. So we're going to begin with this first chorus here, a little song, We've Come This Far By Faith. So we'll do our best to sing a cappella, okay? Here we go. We've come this far by faith. that message and song this morning as I think back over the history of Union High and then later Union Bible Seminary and presently Union Bible College it's only by faith have we existed these 150 years it's only because of God's mercy his faithfulness his goodness and people just like you that are concerned about this institution and, and the progress of sending laborers into the harvest field are, that has brought us to this very moment today. And we are still trusting on Him and in Him uh, as we go forward. Man cannot do things alone. Only God can give strength can give wisdom, can give guidance and direction in the leadership of an institution like this and all of the support of the people. And we certainly 
appreciate that this morning. I want you to just sort of look around this morning. Uh, those of you that some of you are in for the first time, so maybe you wouldn't totally uh, appreciate the renovation that has been done uh, here this morning. And I want to recognize some people for their uh, input and their labors and, and dedication to what you're looking at here this morning. First of all, these beautiful walks that you see here uh, was donated labor and the concrete and uh, this is exposed this is called exposed ag it's, it is cement it would look very similar to the, the, that cement up there except they put a lot of pea gravel gravel in it and they wait until a certain it reaches a certain consistency when they pour it and then they take water and spray it off and expose the pea gravel underneath, which gives it a beautiful uh, curb appeal. And uh, we certainly appreciate that. And the, and the person responsible for that is Rod Board. I don't know where Rod is here. Can, right here. Rod Board, come up here, buddy. He doesn't like that. Let's give him a hand. Rod Gore was a preacher of yesteryear, and uh, he wouldn't mind telling you this, but he got his eyes on other things and got them off of God. But gloriously, just soon to be a year now, he got back to God. God has done something in Rod's heart. He's a changed man. He's a different man. And uh, Rod always pays paid his ties even when he was backslid because he knew one day he wanted to get back and he wanted to have his ties paid up. But since he's gotten back, um, Rod attended this school for a time and he has a love for this school and, and the beautiful sidewalks that you see on around this and on over to the Smith building uh, is because of this man. He's got a crew that they're like a bunch of ants. <laughs> they just, they come in and uh, uh, they just, they're like busy beavers. They just keep going. And we owe a big gratitude to Rod Moore for this beautiful walk that you're seeing here this morning. Let's give him another hand. Also, there's some other individuals, and I'm not going to be able to cover everybody this morning. But there's a lot of prep work and a lot of digging and going on here to make this happen. And I'd like to recognize Jeremy and Gary Fish this morning. I know Jeremy's right here. You come on up here too, old man. Come on up here. This wouldn't be in existence this morning if it wasn't for firm foundation and the fishes are putting in many many hours of labor even got Gary out of the office in his comfortable seat and I walked out here and almost had a stroke myself <laughs> seeing him out here with the rake carrying on I thought he was going to have the big one but he's still among us today and we appreciate that they do a lot for the school that you'll never know about and we owe the fishes a big gratitude for what they do and have done in this particular situation this morning. Let's give them another hand. There's others uh, that uh, Dan Ely, now he didn't donate this particular mulch, but there's some other mulch that he gave. And I don't know that Dan is here this morning. Uh, but uh, Phil Alexander, is Phil here? Right behind me. Come up here, Phil. He looks like he's dressed, ready for work some more. <laughs> Phil done this landscaping that you're seeing here with a lot of other help and uh, done a beautiful job. And uh, we certainly appreciate Phil's labors. And he also found a good deal on this. It, it's a dyed mulch. It's a colored mulch. And uh, this is not actually done yet. There's some other beds 
off to the side, but weather was not friendly to us this year. But let's give Phil uh, uh, Alex Daniels. We bought these, uh, uh, this landscaping, these shrubs, plants from Jim Spears, and I don't know where Jim is here this morning or not, but uh, if you see Jim, you tell him thanks for the school, uh, for what he done, and the sod that is back beyond you here. Again, Phil Alexander got a tremendous price on this sod, probably for a third of what it would normally cost us and he got that from Prairie Creek Sod. And so uh, we will be sending them a letter of, of thanks, and we appreciate all of these people that has contributed. This monument that you're looking here that we're getting ready to unveil this morning was probably a dream that I would have never thought possible. When we first started this endeavor, started thinking about this event, I thought somewhere along the line, we needed to do something to commemorate this, this event. And um, I didn't know, hardly know what to do, so I called Roger Price, and, uh, and I knew he'd done this kind of work. And uh, I asked him, I said, Roger, is it even possible? Would it even be in our budget? to think about doing something like this this morning. And he went off and got some prices, and uh, he said, I'll tell you what, Brother Whit. First, he blew me out of the water. He first, we first started talking, and he had different things. Black marble is the most expensive that you can possibly get, and then it goes down from there. And he said, just to mine the piece of marble, would probably be about ten thousand dollars. Well, uh, we started thinking about something else. <laughs> but he, he he went off and done some. I don't know what all he done. I wasn't there. But he he done some checking, and he came back and he said, uh, "Brother Whitaker, I can get you that that mine, just a blank big piece of a, a marble." for five thousand dollars tell me that's not God in the work and he said I'll go one better than that he said if you will go with the black marble and all of the the committee that's what we really wanted because it's it's the prettiest I mean he showed us examples and uh, uh, that's what we wanted but we just didn't think it was in our budget but when we found that he could get it for five thousand dollars that was our choice but he said um, if you'll take that, he said, I'll do all of the engraving that you want and donate my labor and my time for that. And we appreciate Roger. Come, Rog. Roger's dad was very instrumental in this school and spent many hours here. In fact, is, he was here when I first became president. He loved books. But uh, sure did. I appreciate it. He inherited 3,000, he said. <laughs> well, but anyway, Roger, I just want to say we appreciate what you've done and you're about to see in just a moment the handicraft of a man. <clears throat> While he's giving away uh, accolades here, I would like to point out when, when I was here in junior high, my art teacher, Juanita Arnett. She was my art teacher. And so any anything that you see here in a roundabout way should uh, should uh, It's probably more roundabout. <laughs> Sister Arnett I just found out one thing about you that was good in life. You taught him art. You inspired someone to do something for good. That's tremendous. I appreciate it. As I was uh, wondering what to do and what to read in this particular service, I uh, was thinking what I should read, and I, my mind went to this particular 
uh, passage of scripture, which I think would be fitting to read this morning. All through the Bible we find that the, the children of Israel, when certain events happened that they wanted to recognize, they built altars. Mm -hmm. They took stones and they built them up. And uh, as other generations came along, they could look at this and know what happened during this time. So let me read you in Joshua chapter 4. Most of you are probably very familiar with this particular scripture, but I felt it was fitting to read for this event today. And it came to pass when all the people were clean past over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye then, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you. The wind's not being too cooperative here with me. And uh, out of the place where the priest's feet stood, twelve stones, and you shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had pre prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe, a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take up you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then you shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were, were, were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests, which bear the ark of the covenant, stood, and they are there unto this day. Again, it says that that as the children of Israel pass this way in the future, those stones would be a memorial mm -hmm. to what was accomplished, what God had entered in, led His children into the promised land that was promised them. And um, all of the children of Israel, as they came that way in the, in the future, would know what God has done for them. And I thought that would be fitting for us. Some of us, we can probably look back and see a whole lot farther back than what we got before them. But I thought it was fitting this morning that as the days and the years go on, and as our young people come back to this campus and they visit this school, they would be able to come to this spot and recognize the fact that God was faithful. They will have a piece of history that will let them know that God was faithful to Union Bible College up through the year of 150 years of existence. God is faithful. God has led us this, this far by faith as we've sung. And you know what? I just happen to believe that God is going to continue to lead us on into the days. And our work here is far from over. We need to prepare our young people. And I think it is a wonderful thing this morning as we commemorate our, this event with this memorial. This time I've asked our alumni president, uh, Jeremy Fish, if he would come forth to unveil 
the monument. The word of the Bible, the Bible here on top of this monument, we selected a scripture that I thought it was fitting for this moment. On In the front, those of you that are back there, you'll come, there's a picture of the school, there's a motto of the school, and the day that it was commemorated, and then 150 and 100 years, and, and our our motto here, our heritage of holiness. But the scripture that we chose to put on this is thy word that I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalms 119, 11. And uh, I appreciate it. I have asked Dr. Keaton if he would come and pray a prayer of dedication for this particular service. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come in the name of thy Son, asking that you would receive of us a special thanksgiving as we give honor and glory and praise to your holy name today. And also asking that you would grant a blessing that all that is represented in this event today and in the monument that has been unveiled, that it, Lord, might be blessed with your continuing power till Jesus comes. Yes. Yes. And, Lord, that it may continue to carry the message and touch the lives of young people with thy word, and may it be hid in their heart indeed, and the message of the gospel continue to go around the world. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, we realize that erecting a stone is nothing new that not all are even pleasant. We recognize, Lord, that time moves the hasty step and leaves its deepest footprints in the place we call the grave. There where we erect a stone to show where time has ended and eternity commenced, and it represents death. And we remember, Lord, of, the, of those who were fleeing to the cities of refuge in the Old Testament, and yet soon to be overtaken and slain before they reached the cities of, res of, of refuge. And Lord, you had a monument built there that others might see and remember, and that represented failure. <laughs> but Father, today, as has already been read, we learn of how when they came through the storm and through the sea, you said, bring stones along, and erect a, a monument that will represent victory. All oh, that victory is not without battles, it is not without discouragement, it is not without stumblings, it is not without errors, but it's victory through the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, today it is that type of monument we erect today. Thank you, Lord, for those who this monument represents in their efforts, their wisdom, their spirit-filled lives. There are those who bore the name of Smith who began so much of this work and Thank you, Lord, for what they have done, and we remember them today. Mm -hmm. There are others, Lord, who came along and filled their place in their time and continued the torch in this burning. And now, Lord, today, this is a special event. Lord, this is a, this is a mountaintop, and we know that we don't have many mountaintops of this magnitude as we go through life, 
and this is a grand one, Lord, but it's grand because you are grand, and because you are great, and because you are almighty, and because your purpose and your plan continues to be unfolded on these grounds here in Westfield, Indiana. Thank you, Lord, for giving us each one our opportunity to do our part in our time. And now, Lord, as we look back at this, we may not represent much of it, but Lord, we sense that it is again an avenue to give you the honor and glory for what you did through each of our lives. The teachers, the maintenance people, the administrators, the different ones, and we give you glory and honor and praise. And today we dedicate this, Father, as we pray in the Spirit, through the Son, and to the Father, asking that your holy presence would visit us on these grounds today, accept our offering, accept our acknowledgement of your greatness, and bless our tomorrows, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Glick is going to come again and lead us in a song. All right, I invite you to take your chorus uh, sheet there, what we're talking about. The machine you have, unless we join together on that chorus, bind us faithful. We'll sing it through a couple times, okay? Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May a fire of our devotion light their way. May a footprints that we leave lead them to believe. And the lives we live. vision that some Quakers had of starting this school. And then in 1911, as we've already said, William Smith came to this school with even a bigger vision, training young people in a, in a higher education to go out into the world and reach a dark world that needed to hear the word of Jesus. Many men after that time has led this school and as I read the history and look at it that's still the thing today is to, that each one of us are here because we want to be faithful and we have follow in the footsteps of William Smith and those before us but there's another generation coming on and we want to remain faithful that we can pass the torch on to them as they lead forward into the future. And we want to remain faithful until he comes on that day. This concludes the service here this morning. We want you to remember we have graduation here to this evening at 6 o'clock. We'll be having a school service tomorrow at 2.30 and then the closing of our camp meeting tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And we appreciate all of you that have come, but uh, if you can't be here in and, and the remainder of these services, would you pray for us as we have the closing of this camp that God still would come in a mighty way in our midst. I've asked Brother Sutherland if he would come and close this service uh, with the benediction. God bless Brother Sola. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you 
this morning for the faithfulness of God. Yes. Yes. We thank thee, Lord, that as a keeper of the records of men, yes. you know every tear that has fallen, you know every prayer that's been prayed, <laughs> every drop of uh, perspiration, Lord, that has uh, been shed over the years to keep this place going, and yet behind it all, is the smiling face of God and the hand yes. work of our God that's led on and upward. And we pray, Lord, that Thou would not only bless this occasion and all that are here, but we ask You, Lord, that the sun wouldn't set upon the graduates uh, and students that have gone out of this place to do something for God. Give us a revival from heaven and touch yes. every one of those uh, firebrands, those candlelights that are burning out yonder, whether it's mission field or pastoring somewhere or, or laymen. We ask that thy Holy Spirit would just settle upon each of them and move mightily in these last days. Bless in the graduation service tonight. Bless over this entire weekend and all the events, the messages and the prayers and all uh, that are to be prayed and uh, all the people coming and going. Bless our president and his family. Yes. Give them encouragement from heaven. Our faculty and staff, Lord, put your hand upon each one of them. Supply every need according to your riches and glory. And Lord, as the Israelites of old, when they were they came across the, that river, the sea, we pray, God, this would be a memorial and a monument to the blessings of God over years of time. And uh, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.